Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Brad and um, today we're going to celebrate spring with one of my favorite spring vegetables. This is the Vidalia onion which does come from a very particular area down in uh, the north, uh, sorry the southeast and one of the hallmarks of the Vidalia onion is that it's considered to be so sweet that you can take a bite directly out of it like an apple. I'm not going to suggest that today. But what we are going to make in the kitchen today is uh, two dishes that I think celebrate the wonderful sweet flavors of the Vidalia onion. The first dish we're going to make is a uh, spring onion soup, which I delineate from a classic French onion soup in part because we're going to make it with chicken stock rather than beef stock, so it's a little bit lighter, a little bit more herbaceous. I will still do it au gratin uh, and with a little baguette uh, crouton inside. And then my second dish that I'll be making is uh, essentially French bread pizza. And I'm in fact going to be making it pretty much from scratch, but it's a French pizza recipe. So uh, stay tuned and you're going to have some really wonderful dishes in your repertoire. Welcome back to my kitchen. So we're going to get busy here. And while I start this, so, uh, you know, one of the things about this dish, obviously, there's going to be a lot of chopping. So if you can get some help in the kitchen, I highly recommend it. Otherwise, I'm going to show you guys how I actually chop the onions, especially for the soup. Uh, because in that dish, you obviously want pieces that are bite-sized, but are not going to take you forever to cook. So we're going to take the onion and we're going to chop it up. And um, to do it correctly for the soup, this is my suggestion. So uh, one of the other things about spring onions, you know, you're used to those year-round onions probably. And they're really built more for um, longer storage. They have a little bit more of a shelf life. Um, you'll only ever see these during the summertime. But what's especially interesting about the Vidalia onion is that uh, it does have that very sweet flavor. So you may get an onion with a few soft spots. That's fairly normal with Vidalias. Don't worry about that. Just, uh, you know, anything that feels mushy or spoiled, obviously, just cut out. Uh, this one feels pretty good, nice and solid. Obviously, you want to clear off any of the, uh, the kind of dead looking layers. All right, and then on the other side, and the reason we're totally chopping off the top and the bottom, you know, depending on how you're used to chopping your onion, you may sometimes keep the bottom intact or the top intact as a way to hold the onion together. But in this instance, what we're gonna do is essentially julienne the vegetables. And this is the way I like to do it. So. I've gotten the stem out fairly well. Just uh, cut one more time. There we go, perfect. So you basically want what's left to all the edible onion. And what I do is I take it and I just cut it in half and you wanna use a good sharp knife like I have here. And then all I do is I just take it and I make little slivers. And that's the way that we're gonna basically chop the onion for the soup. Now for the pizza, I might do it the same way. But uh, let's stick to one dish at a time. Welcome back to my kitchen. So in the meantime, what I've done is I've actually chopped a bunch of onions. We've done about two so far. Uh, as you can tell, I don't have a ton of space in my New York City apartment, so I have to modify a little bit. So what I've got going in the stock pot that I'll eventually be cooking in is some olive oil that is now at the perfect temperature. And what is the perfect temperature? Well, honestly, uh, my rule of thumb has been when you put the oil in the pan, when it starts to release its fragrance is when it's actually reached the perfect temperature. Now, the trick with these onions, I'm not actually gonna be sauteing them or browning them. I'm just going to be uh, wilting them so that way they release a little bit of their water and they reduce, but they don't necessarily uh, brown. So in fact, this isn't a little too high. You shouldn't be getting this much sizzling. So I'm gonna adjust down my temperature a little bit. And I basically put about half as much onion in right now that I'm going to eventually want to be cooking with, but one of the ways to compensate for the fact that I have such a small kitchen is to do things in um, a little more batches than I normally would do with large cooking facilities. So anyway, we're going to let these reduce. So what we have going on here in this pan is just some nicely reducing onions. Um, they're not quite done yet. Uh, basically, you know, had to do it in batches, so some of the early onions are, are getting a little soft. The goal really is to have onions that are going to just basically melt in your mouth as you're eating the soup. 
And once that's done, um, this dish really becomes very simple and straightforward. We're just gonna put in some stock, we're gonna add some herbs, and we're gonna let that simmer for a while. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna start getting my pizza dough ready for my second dish, which of course is the promised French bread pizza. So here's what we're gonna do. Obviously, you're gonna want a nice rolling pin. Um, I also have a baking tray lined with Silpat, which I highly recommend. Uh, the Silpat just really helps whatever it is you're cooking, cookies, pizza dough, whatever, just come right off without worrying about it sticking and it keeps your baking trays nice and clean also. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of fresh yeast. Um, if you wanted to do this with uh, instant dry yeast, you can cut it down eh, 40 to 50 percent. Um, so that would be about three tablespoons, sorry, three teaspoons worth of yeast. But I'm gonna I'm gonna do a full tablespoon here because it's fresh. And you want to be really careful with yeast that you add it when it is uh, with 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 live yeast. You want to make sure that you're adding it while the dish is not too cold, otherwise you will kill your yeast. So you want to either do it before or after you have mixed in the water to your uh, to your flour. And at the same time, I'm going to take one and a third cups of flour. Yes, I'm using my fingers to uh, to get it, and that looks about a cup. And we're gonna do another third. There we go. All right. And I'm gonna actually do my yeast right now, just to uh, get the uh, get that in there. And there are times when you simply need to knead, and this is one of them. So I'm going to knead in the yeast to the flour. And also to get the yeast going, the other thing I need to add is a pinch of salt. So I'm going to add that in right now. And if you've never done this before, what you want to do is basically make a little well in your flour which I assure you I've done. You just want to take your egg, and just break it off in there. Continue kneading it until you start to get the, uh, the nice bready consistency that you're looking for. And eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this mixture and I'm going to set it aside. And while the rest of the dishes continue cooking, I am going to let this mixture start to rise. I'm going to take my dough and I'm going to start just trying to get it smooth. And the way to do that is just take the dough and just fold it over onto itself. Now this of course is the step that we do after we've added the water into the mix. And uh, you know, what you the goal is to fold it onto itself. That's the that's the kneading process, and to just really get a nice smooth dough. Now you want to be careful not to over knead the bread. Otherwise, what you're going to end up with is uh, just a very rough textured dough, and that is in fact not what we want, especially not for uh, the softer types of bread you want in pizza. Um, and so then from there, which I'm going to do, I'm just going to take some flour and put this into the mixing bowl. I originally was making the solid. And I'm going to just take my little ball of now very smooth, very delectable flour, uh, uh, flour dough, and I am going to put it back in here. And while we continue cooking everything else, I'm just going to take a kitchen cloth and just put it over the top. And there we go. So. Let's move on to the next thing, where I think we're ready to add the stock to the broth. Welcome back. Uh, I think we're ready with the onions here. So first, I just want to show you the state that they're at right now. So one of the things you'll notice when you get the onions going to the right temperature is that there's a lot of liquid now, and that's going to really add a lot of flavor to your stock. Uh, but that also, the, mush the mushrooms, the onions are nice and limp. 
And this just guarantees that uh, between the cooking they've had already and now that they're about to get their uh, stock, that they will just be buttery in your mouth. And that's exactly the consistency that you want. So I'm cheating a little bit and capitalizing on the luxury of living in such a culinary city. I did go ahead and pre-purchase my chicken stock. Not to say that I would never make it myself, but uh, I'm afraid that it was a little beyond my time constraints for the day. So we're going to just pour in the chicken stock. And it's obviously going to stop the cooking temporarily, so you want to bring that back up to temperature again. And I'm also going to add my herbs in a moment. And you can put in, obviously, anything that you think would complement the flavors. Uh, keep in mind that the onions themselves are going to be a little bit lighter than uh, if you were to use a plain old white onion, which was a question I got from one of my viewers. And um, one of the nice things about doing it this way is because you have a chance to really flavor the soup as much with the herbs as with the onions, is you, you can just really make it just a, a celebration of the spring, a celebration of all the wonderful uh, flavors and varieties that come with the summer. So uh, I personally, for my spring onion soup, the uh, herbs that I like to put in include uh, curly parsley and tarragon. And you know, tarragon is one of those herbs that I think we underutilize a little bit here in the United States in our cuisine. Uh, obviously very uh, common in French cuisine. French tarragon obviously is, is uh, one of the ways that they often sell it in the market. Well, there are a few different varieties. But uh, I just think that the slightly licorice undertones of uh, an herb that still to me is in the basil family, palo wise, just, just really brings out some nice characteristics in the, in the onions. Anyway, we're gonna let this sit and we're gonna let this come back to a boil and then we're gonna throw the top on and we're gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes or a half hour. And what you really put together is a very quick cooking spring onion soup. In the meantime, I have my pizza dough getting ready to uh, complete its rising process and then we're going to just roll the dough out over here onto our silk pad and then we're gonna load up with some really delicious onions and some other nice uh, accompaniments for our French bread pizza. So we'll be right back. So what we've done here is I've actually taken the tarragon as well as the curly leaf parsley and I have put it into the bowl. I'm sorry, into the uh, uh, stock pot along with my very rapidly shrinking <laughs> onions and the uh, accompanying stock that's cooking. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it back to boil. And you'll notice that the herbs are actually still whole. And I did this really for a couple reasons. So what I'm going to do when the soup is finished cooking, I'm actually going to take these herbs out because they'll pretty much have released all of their flavor. And I'll take just a little tiny bit of chopped up tarragon and chopped up parsley and I'll add it to the finished soup to garnish it as well as to bring it a little extra intense flavor. So let's uh, get this boiling and we'll come back because next we're going to make the uh, crouton and the uh, gratin topping that goes on top. So in the meantime, I'm also going to make my crouton and I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned a while ago about a nice simple way to get a nice crispy, really uh, very nicely brown top to your cheese without having to go through a ton of efforts or needing a salamander in your kitchen. So here's what I do. First, I'm gonna take my trusty little bread knife and I'm gonna just cut into a nice uh, little baguette that I purchased at the market. And I'm gonna make not terribly thin, but not terribly thick slices of bread about this big um, with the theory that I'll do probably about two per bowl of soup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them, when they're finished being cut, and I'm going to line them up on a nice little uh, tray for my toaster oven, actually. And what I'm going to do is essentially take them, I'm just going to make two more little slices here, and I'm going to actually put the cheese directly on top. And I'd imagine you're going to realize fairly quickly what I have in mind doing here. So first, I'm actually gonna line this little tin foil so it's a little easier to clean up for me. So we put 
put the bread slices onto the tray. And now I'm gonna take the cheese that I'm using for the soup. I went for a nice Swiss Emmental, uh, my favorite for this type of soup. Uh, but you could use any kind of Swiss, really. And even though I'm not serving it, I'm gonna take out my little cheese plane so I get nice, even slices. And I'm just going to zip zip, take a nice little hunk like that, and put one on top of each piece. If your cheese actually has holes in it, like mine does, uh, one thing you can do also is just take some spare slices and fill in around the holes because you really want to cover the crouton with the cheese as much as possible. And then I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them into the toaster oven. And I'm just going to uh, open the top of the oven so that way the heat will continue to blast it. But you don't really want the bread to bake. It might make it get a little bit tough. So that's what we're going to do next. So let me finish planing my cheese and um, we will come back momentarily. So as our soup continues cooking and I have now completed my little croutons, as you see I've just kind of layered some cheese on it. Um, just enough to get it nice and brown and bubbly. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it fairly high because you want it close to the heat source. So I'm actually going to move my rack a little bit. Fairly high in the toaster oven. And I'm going to prop it so the door's open. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to set it on broil actually. Now I know that that seems a little counterintuitive because I'm actually not broiling at all. Um, my particular toaster oven must be on broil in order for the top heating element to engage, and that um, that's true on some. They'll either alternate or they'll just do the bottom for baking. Um, and so I've got this coming up now, and what you really want to do is eyeball it. That's the most important thing. I can't give you any kind of time about how long it's going to take for the top of the cheese to really kind of get that melty, crusty, kind of golden brown sheen to it, but I can tell you that the difference between that and having a completely burnt you know, smoking mess is a very, very small matter of degrees, and I speak from experience here, folks. So uh, just keep your eye on this particular dish while it's cooking, and let's continue letting our uh, soup uh, have all the flavors gel, and we're going to finish rolling out the pizza dough and putting our uh, toppings on it in just another moment. So thank you, guys, and uh, stay tuned. So what you're looking at right now is the croutons in the toaster oven, and you'll notice that they're already getting bubbly fairly quickly. This is one of the reasons why you definitely want to keep the uh, top of your toaster oven open. You'll notice that the cheese is starting to melt off the bread. I'm going to try to angle ourselves up here better. And um, you know, you, you really want to do is get the golden brown is get the golden brown colors without necessarily losing all your cheese by melting it into your bread. So, in fact, I might even open my door a little bit more and continue to let them cook, and we'll be back when they have achieved perfection, golden brown. And here we have our perfectly brown little croutons. And what's nice is, you know, I've made these pretty much well in advance of the soup being finished. Otherwise, when I used to make this, I would be scrambling around at the 11th hour to throw each bowl in my little toaster and it was hard to get each one even and it would wind up heating up the bowls extensively and it just made for a very uh, difficult presentation. So this is just a nice little shortcut and a nice way to uh, still give your home spring onion soup that restaurant, uh, restaurant quality. Here we are back in the kitchen with some exciting things going on. So first I'm going to start sauteing the rest of the onions that I have to uh, turn golden brown for the top of the pizza. So I know the last batch of onions that we uh, turned into the soup, we just wanted to make a little bit more, uh, you know, moist and buttery. These we're looking to make a little more golden brown. So at the same time that that's going on, over here, my dough has basically doubled in size and I'm ready to just take it and you'll see that the bread is just contracting back in on itself. And that basically is to let out the current amount of air in it and to be able to roll this out. So let's actually do that next. And I've got some really great ingredients at the bottom of the top. Just delicious. So first, I take my flour. Just get my little work area ready. Just a little bit of flour so that way it's, nothing will stick, there's no moisture. And I take out my dough, 
Oh, it just feels so wonderfully ready. And I'm going to take out my rolling pin. Now, uh, this is not going to be a circular pizza. We're going to go more for the rectangular shape. There's a couple different reasons. I don't really have a pizza stove. And uh, also, I just want to cook this in my uh, baking pan, which we saw a little bit earlier with the salt added in. So this just helps make it all just uh, the right proportion. And what we're going to do, once I have this all rolled out properly, is we're going to start to put some really nice toppings on it. And uh, on one side, we're going to do heirloom tomato and some Vidalia onion that we're turning gold in right now, uh, some Niswa olives and some anchovies. On the other side, we're going to do some uh, red peppers, some tomato, some onion. All right. So we have finished getting some nice golden brown onions on the stove here. And um, I've got my dough all nicely rolled out in my pan, getting ready. Uh, and at the same time, I have turned the temperature in my oven up to 400 degrees. So now we're going to do the toppings. And we're going to actually make two halves of the pizza because we have guests with differing uh, tastes. So I'm just going to spread out some of my onions here, make it nice and uh, consistent across my dough. I'm also going to add a little, little oil in, which will give it a nice golden brown for any of the exposed, uh, the exposed areas under the heat. So we've got some onion, and that'll, that'll put like, a nice sweetness into it. And like I said, tying it together with this whole uh, theme, as it were, today. And now I need my basil and a few other ingredients that I have mostly prepared already. As far as the basil goes, I'm just going to take uh, some nice fresh basil that I have here, and I thought this would be a nice accompaniment, as it, as it often is with pizza. I want to put that sort of towards the bottom because I don't I don't want to burn herb flavor in my pizza. I can always add some fresh at the very end as well. All right. So on one side, we're going to do some nice peppers. Just give it a little, a little layout, a little flair. All right. And then on the other side of the pizza, what we're going to do, we're going to do some uh, niçoise olives to make, uh, make it keep in with its French theme. Uh, also, to just get the pits out, which I did, because uh, although you could serve it with the pits, I just don't think it's as pleasing. You just, you know, sort of press down with the back of your knife onto your olive, and then you just uh, slice it on one side, and hopefully the pit will cut out fairly easily. And indeed, in this, in this instance, it has. So now I'm going to take my olives, and I'm going to just sort of uh, spread them around my pizza on the half of it. So. the olives. There we go. We're also going to do some uh, tomato over top. So this is in lieu of an actual tomato sauce, basically. All right, there we go. And then some other ingredients I'm going to throw on just to make it a little extra fancy. So I've actually got some nice anchovies, fresh anchovies actually, uh, marinated in olive oil. And what I'm going to do, just to not make them that heavy, I'm going to take them and I'm going to just rinse them off in the sink before I use them. It'll also brush away some of the saltiness that can sometimes come from an anchovy. Uh, but not totally cast aside all the flavor, obviously. Once this is done, we're going to take our pizza and we're going to put it in the oven for, oh, I'd say maybe 20 minutes or so for a pizza this size. And what we basically have is a uh, 
is a nice cheeseless, delicious pizza. Now let's see what uh, what we get. All right, our pizza is ready to come out of the oven. I'm so excited. All right, so check this out. What we have here is a perfectly done pizza. On this side we have the olives, the anchovies, the tomato, the onion. On this side, we also have the onion, we also have the tomato, we also have some nice fresh peppers. And now, I'm gonna take my pizza, I'm gonna use the right tool for the right job. Definitely uh, always wanna use the right kind of pizza knife for this, otherwise you're not gonna get the ability to cut through the crust and make just, you know, really nicely sliced little, little pieces of pizza. Coming up next, we're going to uh, head to the table and give everything a taste. All right, and now we have our finished soup, and I've put a little tarragon and parsley on top to garnish with our little crouton and gratin topping uh, on top. And now the uh, moment of truth with the pizza. Bread's light and airy, sort of like a French bread. And that's really delicious. Delicious flavors on top. Bon appetit from my table to yours. Join us next time as we'll continue exploring the wondrous world of cuisine available to us in New York City and able to be cooked in my tiny little New York City kitchen. Until then.